Testing, one, two, three.
Bach's belatedly his 85th birthday. So happy birthday, man. <laughs> I must thank Heidi Erdman, the curator of this show, for her relentless energy, and our student helpers, Chloe Adams, Yolanda Lee, Thomas Simmons, Pete Carbo, for their hard work installing the show. Our esteemed opening speaker this evening is Professor Siraj Rasool, longtime friend and previous bandmate of Manfred's. It's impossible to share the depth of Professor Russell's research, publications, and other achievements, um, so I'll just give you a brief overview. Siraj Russell is Senior Professor of History at the University of the Western Cape and directs Remaking Societies, Remaking Persons Supranational Forum with partners in Accra, Kampala, and Cairo and which supports research and scholarships in museum and heritage studies, exhibition production, and forensic history. He has directed the African program in museum and heritage studies at UWC since 2003. He is also one of the principal investigators for the international project Action for African Cultural Restitution, which works on matters of museums and restitution. Michaelis warmly welcomes you as we invite you to speak. Thank you so much, thank you so much, Jay, for that very generous uh, introduction. It is very good to be back at Michaelis, where I taught for, I don't know, as many as 10 years in the old commerce school. Um, and, but this was always a space where it was very exciting to spend a lot of time. Uh, I was an undergraduate student at the University of Cape Town, uh, also did a law degree, and that was of course on what our friends here used to call upper campus. <laughs> but it, for some reason it used to be more exciting to come to Michaelis. And as you will remember, those were very difficult days. Um, there were, they, you could count the amount of black people on this, on this campus, like on your one hand. We were a couple of hundred on upper campus. Those were the dark days of uh, permits. And there were all kinds of difficulties, as some of you will be able to remember. But that was also a time of important debate amidst political mobilization and some of those debates were about the relationship between research and work you did at the university and how those could be brought to bear in the project of building re resources for resistance that was a a, a, a fundamental question for us and for those of us who were studying at this institution on a permit we were under very strict instructions from the political group to restrict what we did yeah because we were at the university uh, under protest so we didn't we weren't meant to do sport and to socialize and so forth but this, the 1980s were also a time of building solidarity, building political movements, building civic agency. And what happened on this campus had a very particular significance in all of that work that, had to, that took place. And as you know, the field of fine art was extremely contested, extremely fraught in which there were people who guarded the boundaries of what was to be included and what was to be kept at bay. And we were able to participate in some of those debates with some of our friends and comrades and colleagues at this university. I'm looking at Tina Smith just in front of me. And 
uh, Paul Grendon, Stanley Hermans, there are a whole range of them, a whole list of them who were important in those debates and discussions. And there's also an institutional matrix about the relationship between fine art and community arts, who had access to what kind of education or what was also called training. And some of you will remember a community arts project that emerged and we had a wonderful um, kind of memory experience a couple of weeks ago at Zeitz Mocha thinking about the history of CAP as part of the events of the past disquiet exhibition that is on there. And amidst all of those institutional dynamics and the debates about the categories through which we understand and consider artwork, and art production. What is the relationship between the artist and the struggle? What is, the re what is resistance art? Is resistance art part of fine art? And in that, those discussions and in those debates, Manfred was present. Manfred's work was always present. And I'd like to make it to, to say that Manfred's work consistently has been, has given us arguments. These have been artworks as arguments on some of the central questions that have faced us in the last few decades. It has been an enormous pleasure to be a Chaba of Manfred to be his comrade, to be his friend, to have played in a band with him, together with Garth Erasmus, standing currently on higher ground, <laughs> <laughs> and to, to be with them as visual artists who were wanting to incorporate sonic production into their art practice. And these were some of the brief moments in which I myself momentarily was turned into somewhat of an artist, <laughs> which I'm very grateful for. That was an ambition of mine. We still have a CD. We still have a CD. And it's, you know, you, if, if you go online, you will be able to see some of the evidence of this practice from the 1980s. An exhibitionary process that was initiated by Manfred called interaction that took place inside of CAP in which members of the public and the community were invited to interfere and add to the artwork at a very dangerous time when to make any kind of pronouncement could have rendered you to be in prison. And I think it was 2007 or 2008, and there is a video probably also on YouTube in which uh, Manfred had an exhibition at Heidi Erdmann's gallery in Short Market Street, and in which we had an opportunity to think about the relationship between visuality and the sonic, and sonic questions. So, and then, about 15 years ago, we had this brief period, well, it wasn't so brief, but where we played music, and our crazy Manfred would perform, he would chant, he would shout, he would scream, and he would play whatever instrument he had there for the day, as we went along with this music that was essentially improvised 
because these were people who did not believe in structure. <laughs> Everything needed to be improvised. <laughs> they were resistant to performance. They did not want to perform. They did not want to go in, they did not want, not want an audience because everything had to be, couldn't be contained within any kind of structure. So, but there is a CD, and if you, some of you are <laughs> and there was also, a, there was also a Pan-African Space Station performance that, that, was, that was, was, was quite notable. And at that time, Manfred turned 70. Mm. And there was a Kenyan filmmaker who was around in, in Cape Town, uh, Philippa? Philippa. Yeah. Philippa DC, DC Herman, Herman mm. who made a film when he was a very young man at the age of 70. <laughs> and you know what he called that film? I'm not yet dead. <laughs> I'm not yet dead. Well, as you can see, Yes, 15 years later, he's, he's not yet dead. <laughs> he is fully contributing to our public culture yeah. because Manfred, as you know, came from Germany. His parents were disabled people who suffered at the hands of the Nazis. We are very happy that Wahiba is here as part of his biological family, but we are all Manfred's family. Manfred made a choice in life to live in South Africa and be a South African. And in saying that, he said, he, I want all of you to be our, my family. And we are very pleased to be Manfred's family here tonight. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, we look yes. forward to the next exhibition <laughs> in another <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we still playing Rimpy Fasmak plays every Sunday night in my house. <laughs> 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 yes, there is the guest here. And there is Terence here. And there is Andrew here. Rimpy Fasmak members. Yeah. Still going strong. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely. Lovely. <laughs> and there's Kevin, especially come from Chowood. Old, old friends here. He's a cat from in Mowbray already. Member of Kevin. Kevin Humphrey. I just want to say. Yeah, he gave me a surprise. And it's a good way to interview. And I also just want to thank Michaela's and I want to thank Jay. And the, and the students yesterday who turned this, um, this installation day into such a wonderful, a wonderful day. Thank you very much, and thank you all for for being here. Thank and, you, um, Peggy. And um, happy birthday, month, month. After Heidi, she did help me. She was great. She was great. She was very nice today. And uh, all the students here. Yeah. I want to hug them. Yes, of course. People, the boy is now. <laughs>